Hello and welcome to another episode of Tales from a Professional Nerd. My name is Brian C.P. Steele and I will be your nerd today or any other day that you watch one of my silly little shows. Hi everybody. So this has been two weeks in the making because I had a couple of conventions, uh, which we'll get into those conventions in a minute. Let's go ahead and jump into the week in Brian and just, uh, you know, cross that off. Um... The easy one uh, will be personally, uh, I did remarkably well. Um, not, not, not necessarily staying to my diet, but I did a lot of exercise and a lot of uh, not snacking and things while I was at the shows. Uh, so uh, doing good there. Um, my sciatica kind of blew up last week. Um, so a lot of my gym trips have been really, really low impact. So a lot of massage table, a lot of sauna, um, a lot of just like kind of slower, slower side of treadmill, uh, just because I've been waking up every day and, you know, it's, it's definitely getting better, but, um, those first couple of days were, uh, like you'd, st I'd step the wrong way and my knees would want to, you know, would want to buckle underneath me. I mean, it was, it was rough. It was, it was, it was pretty rough. Um, I'm mostly okay now, uh, but I'm still kind of taking it easy, so I'm trying to be more mindful of uh, how much I'm eating, how much I'm snacking, trying to get up every hour and a half or so and move around, stretch around, stretch about. Um, it's just part of, part of being old, part of trying to reshape my body away from being uh, what it currently is. Um, it happens. Uh... Additionally, uh, let's see, personal stuff, um, I don't think there's a whole lot, uh, you know, regular life has been kind of normal. We're still waiting to hear back from the judge on, uh, Natalie's disability, um, but still, you know, fingers crossed things seem pretty positive on that. Um, yeah, uh, painting, painting I actually... Uh, did uh, I painted uh, my demo version of the cartel agent from Warzone Eternal. Um, and then uh, because of something that we showed off at Adepticon, um, I am starting the process to paint a pair of our uh, Immaculate Furies for uh, the Dark Legion, uh, which if you haven't had a chance to see them, you should pop over to our... Uh, Facebook page, a couple of people have put up some, uh, or the Discord, a couple of people have put up some pictures of, uh, of the Immacul Immaculate Fury, uh, which I will say is, in my personal opinion, probably the best version of that creature that has ever been sculpted. You know, yes, I'm biased, but it's the first time we've seen the Soul Shearer rifle in miniature form. And it's the first time that we've got an Immaculate Fury that either didn't look... That looks actually like it's a monster and not kind of a weird clown. Uh, and it, it has a, a normal pose rather than like this super extended uh, rock and roll bassist pose. Um, yeah, so painting-wise, that's pretty much been it. Not a, not a lot going on over there. Um, but that's hopefully will will change soon. Uh, because I, uh, as we'll, as we'll bleed into the work stuff, um, you'll find out, uh, that hopefully I'll have a little extra free time soon. Um, let's see, uh, gaming wise, uh, so apart from the games and stuff that happened at the shows, uh, didn't get a lot of actual gaming gaming in, uh, although, let's see, the... Yeah, back on the 16th uh, for Accidental Cyclops on their Twitch stream, uh, I role-played uh, a, in an industry, I, I took the industry professional spot in a Kickstarter backer special edition of The Real Thing, the Faith No More role-playing game by Accidental Cyclops. Uh, it's part one. Part two is actually going to come out uh, this weekend, the 30th. Uh, I believe we go live at like 630 Central or uh, Eastern Standard Time, um, where I am playing a uh, homeless conspiracy theorist named Teal, uh, with his uh, his crowbar Nancy, and his uh, belief that all tap water is uh, sent is is filtered 
and uh, added to by the government to control your mind. Um, which is why he drinks only booze and rainwater. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't play a lot of... Uh, uh, I have not played a lot of Powered by the Apocalypse in the past. Um, I have... I, I know the system. It's an easy system. Um, but I haven't played a lot of it, and I'm having a good time. Uh, it's... I'm glad... This is part of the reason why I like doing the streams that I do. Like, the uh, the, the chance for not every stream needs to be D&D. Um, because it gives me an opportunity to test out some stuff, to see some new settings, to, to play with other people. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very excited about that, uh, to see how that, that story concludes. Um, the uh, other games that I've played, uh, I was supposed to play uh, this last weekend in one of my buddies D&D games down in Indianapolis, um, but, uh, we had like two cancellations and he himself got hit with, uh, a very, very, not, it's not even con crud. He just got hit with a nasty infection that, uh, they think that it might be the flu. And he's like, you know what? Everyone stay home. So we're not playing this weekend ever. Um, yeah, uh, that's, I think that's, oh, and then video games played, played a little bit of Baldur's Gate, um, as, uh, as, as you do. Uh, but then I've also gotten recently uh, the, the, the itch to play Halo. Um, and I know where that itch comes from. Uh, so a lot of people gave the, uh, the, the Halo TV show, um, really gave it a lot of help. Uh, they did not like the fact that Master Chief took his helmet off. They, they didn't like the fact that they're trying to treat him more as a person than an entity. Uh, and that the story is not exactly what they told in, uh, in the video games slash novels. Now, I'm normally one to be like, just stick with the source material, you know? But if it, if changes have to happen, uh, or if changes happen and it's for a good spin, like it, it like it helps the story along or tells a, tells a slightly more in-depth story, um or adds to a character that maybe might be a little flat without it, I'm totally on board. Uh, and that is and that is definitely what is happening here, is that it is, it is definitely a tale told in the Halo universe. Um, it has a lot of the same characters, a lot of the same personalities. Uh, some of the beats, like the, the main like tentpole arcs are the same, but it is still a slightly different story, and I'm actually really enjoying it. So is my wife. So is my kid. Um, you know, so for all the people who are yelling and screaming that it's not the Halo that they want, I get it. Um, I've done my fair share of yelling and screaming at media that isn't what I wanted out of it. Uh, but it doesn't change the fact that it is still entertaining to some, and myself included. And this last season two started a while back, and, and we're starting to dig into it. Um... And it, it got me, this last episode got, like, it, it made me want to play the game again. So I re-downloaded it, and I have uh, been getting into uh, throwing plasma grenades and, uh, you know, stealing floating alien motorcycles. Once again. Uh, so that's really all the gameplay. Uh, I guess work stuff... Work stuff, um, because I did the conventions and some of it was work stuff. Well, we'll we'll just use that to tie right into the into the thing. Uh, first and foremost, I I finished the uh, Shadowrun novel manuscript and sent it in for its uh, editing slash notes. Um, very excited that that got wrapped up with a bow. I'm already ready to start the next one, uh, but I do I do want to to say that. This book that I just finished, um, I uh, I got to do some things in the Shadowrun universe, like the the collective Shadowrun universe that is uh, not your normal backdrop for Shadowrun things. So I I am very thankful for the the opportunity to add to the meta in that way, um, and to play with one of the main six world arcs. Uh, that are currently that's currently ongoing. Uh, so I'm excited to see. Uh, I'll be. I, I always, you know, I know they always say don't read the comments. I do read the comments. I definitely read the reviews. Um, 
I try not to let the ones that uh, you know, are hyperbolic and very you know kind of cranky ones. I try not to let those bother me uh, unless what they say, unless I unless I feel what they what they're saying in the review has some merit. Um, but all that aside, I'm very excited to see. I mean, it's going to be several months before that actually comes out because of you've got editing and you get the cover art made, you got printing process. You know, like there's there's still a lot of stuff that needs to be done to make that book a reality. Um, but I'm glad that it's turned in, uh, and I'm glad that I get to start on the next one because the next one's going to be very very exciting. Um, and the next one's more or less just for me. Uh, it's not a big deep meta story. It's not you know there's not any major you know plot points that uh, that the, the Shutter and like John and Jason and those guys that they want me to make sure to include this one's more of a palette cleanser of my creativity so i'm excited to get that put together uh also uh the official work is underway on intergalactic heroes i mean it, it always has been but like it's now very real um I'm starting to put together the actual sections. I've shown playtesters some of the parts, uh, you know, outside playtesters from the people that like are in my little tight group. Um, I've started to show them things like uh, some of the alien origins, some, some of the classes. Uh, we had a discussion on one of the on the the playtester only Discord group um, about the reason why blasters do what they do. Uh, it's it's just very cool. I had a meeting with people, the other people, the other folks at Evil Genius to talk about, you know, the fact that I want this to be a two book project. You know, it needs to be a player's guide and a game master's guide, not one giant tome, or you know, scattered amongst four. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's coming it's coming together, and uh, the cool thing is, uh, so sounds like next week I should. Uh, we should be launching the Intergalactic Heroes official Facebook page, and I've got some cool stuff to put up on that. Um, so next week, I think, as a uh, maybe a celebration of the Facebook page going live and things really starting to, to go forward, um, I think next week's episode is going to be based on Intergalactic Heroes. So I, I, I will be uh, I will be absolutely you know jazz to start talking about the, the the direction that that project is going to go um yeah uh, as far as other evil genius stuff um i uh, i think either today or tomorrow uh i'm going to be finishing up on one of our organized play adventures a very important organized play adventure and i'm orchestrating about two or three others from other writers uh, just to kind of get a bunch of stuff in the can so the artists and the layout guys can you know, work on those while we're pushing forward on other things. Um, had a really good meeting yesterday about the uh, uh, some of the adventures that we're talking about doing in, uh, in the conventions later this year. So just all around, good, good times over there. Happy, happy with how, uh, how things are progressing. Um, with, uh, I took on a little, uh, little board game fluff gig. Uh, it's not due until a, a little while later and it's not very much like, it's not a high word count project. So I, I haven't really started on that yet, but it's nice to know that it's in the, uh, it's in the back pocket. Um, in talks of possibly doing, uh, some writing for an older company that I used to work for. Um, more on that as it gels, but uh, that should be pretty cool. Um, I like the subject matter a great deal. Um, and the fan base is uh, was always very receptive of my work. So I uh, hope to be... It's, I'll be glad to be able to add to that again uh, a little ways down the road. Uh, and then actually we'll... I'm, I'll, I'm going to mention Wars and Eternal now in the fact that uh, uh, I'm doing some cool work, but we're going to talk more about that when we get to the Adepticon part of my review, my convention reviews, uh, f just because they kind of go hand in hand. The, the reason I was at Adepticon uh, was for Wars on Eternal, and a lot of the work stuff that I was doing for Wars on was while I was there. So... Um, yeah, let's get into it. Let's let's talk about the the shows. 
Uh, all right, so uh, Natalie and I packed up the car, grabbed uh, grabbed our wonderful, wonderful service dog, Bruce, um, and uh, headed up to uh, toward the Wisconsin area to go to Lake Geneva for Gary Con on Wednesday. Uh, but we did have to make a stop, actually, in Schaumburg. We had to stop at Adepticon before we went to Gary Con because I needed to drop off the demo models for uh, for the table. Uh, for, for the, the Resnova table. And uh, while I was there, it was funny because I kept running into people that were like, you're not supposed to be here. I didn't think you were going to be here. When are you going to be here? Uh, so it was a lot of me telling people, hey, I'm not really here. I'm not really here. Uh, I'll be here Saturday, but not now. And I ran, what was funny is I ran into uh, my friend, uh, an industry luminary named Tommy Gofton. Uh, the, uh, one, the, one of the owners slash, uh, personalities over at Six Sides of Gaming. Um, and, uh, Tommy and I were pretty positive that we weren't going to actually see each other this weekend because while I was doing two conventions, he was doing three. He actually flew out to PAX East, out to Boston, to get a day of PAX East in between Gary Khan and Adepticon. It's madness. It's madness what he did. But we were talking about how this we you know we weren't gonna get a chance to see each other um because our convention schedules lined up basically the opposite. I was gonna be at Gary Khan while he was at Adepticon. He was gonna be at Adepticon while I was at Gary Khan. Uh, but with the extra stop, um I managed to see him get a hug and uh, you know say hi and then be on our way. He got to uh, he got to meet my wife. Um it was just it was nice it was unexpected uh then we we finished our trip we went up to gary got up to gary con got, got checked into the hotel uh and then went over and got badges and things uh and uh got to see i i love going to shows where where some of these people this is the only show that i see them at because it's it is like a little reunion it's you know you get to get you know big uh uh big friendship waves you know filled the the the, the battery gets filled um, but I will say, uh, it was the first time I got to meet, uh, uh, Todd and Griffin from Phoenix. Um, wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, Todd is from Laughing Moon Productions. Uh, he's making his own, uh, his own role-playing game that he's been making forever. And I've always wanted to, you know, just try and be part of it if I could, but also just to meet the guy. He's a, he's a super sweet guy. He's a great um, and it was the first time we had a chance to see each other in, 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 in person. Uh, uh, plus Griffin, his, uh, his, his right hand gal. Uh, I, she and I have talked quite a bit on various socials. Um, she is a, an awesome player, uh, and a pretty cool, pretty cool game master. Uh, and just a wonderful, wonderful human, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful human being. And it was nice to, to get a chance to, I mean, you've always got a face to a name, but it's a good chance to get, to, to actually get to meet somebody and give them the hug that they deserve. Because if you've known me for 10 minutes, I'm a hugger. Um, so yeah, I got to, got to meet, uh, uh Todd and Griffin in, in person. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Gary Khan was kind of, was just kind of a blur. Uh, because, you know, it's two and a half days of running games. Uh, I got to run two sessions of our organized play, um, one of which was for a, a half full table. And I was running the little two hour plots, uh, which are kind of bite size adventure, you know, a way to, I, you know, you maybe you don't have enough time for a full, uh, a full game or a full plot arc, but here's a cool little task that your characters get to do. And it's a good way of like, kind of feeling out the character. Is this the, is this how I want to do? It's a great way to learn the system. Uh, so I ran a couple of plots. One was for a table of three and the other one was for a table of seven. Uh, you know, technically it's only a six person table, but they had a friend there that was like, Hey, do you mind if I sit and watch? And we were like, no, why don't you grab one of the pregens and join us? And we had a blast. Uh, it was a great time. It was also the first time that I got to, uh, uh, that I got to roll dice at the table with my friend, Sean. Um, Sean is one of the, uh, he was one of the editor or they were one of the editors at, um, Renegade, uh, that helped make my, uh, make my words pretty over there. 
uh, and it was the first time we had a chance to actually play together. And we, I, I had a, I had a ton of fun. We had a lot of laughter. It was a, gr it was a good table. Uh, it was a good table full of, uh, full of great gamers that had a, hopefully had a good time. Um, it was, it was excellent. I was very, very pleased with how that turned out. Uh, also got to play in, uh, a play test session with, uh, of a, of a, of a new system, uh, ran by one of my friends, Heather. Um, Natalie and Nathan both played in that play test with us. And, uh, I mean, we had, we had a good time. It was fun. It was definitely fun. Um, but it was short, uh, and I hope, I don't know if we got a lot done as far as I play testing goes, but we got a good grasp of how they were putting the system together. Uh, it is still definitely early in its, uh, in its infancy. Um, and Heather's going to send out a questionnaire of, of questions and notes and things, uh, from the play test. I, I, I grabbed some notes. I drew some stuff up to, that, you know, that I kind of picked up while we played a few weaknesses, a couple of, uh, you know, I think this is really cool moments um and uh a, you know a couple of helpful hints if she wants them uh but it was it was it was a lot of fun we had we had a, a great time i always love getting a chance to play with strangers uh, so some of the other people at the table weren't friends they weren't play testers like us they were you know just people that saw a cool event and came and played and they definitely see you know they they, they took to the they took to the system so to speak it was a good time. Um, Natalie ended up playing a bunch more games because uh, she actually stayed behind at GaryCon while I went off to the, went down to Adepticon. Um, but she played more games than I did. Uh, it, it was it was. I, I'm I'm always very happy to see her you know, stretch her gamer wings. Um, but uh, uh, hearing her talk about these characters that she was given, some of the moments that happened during these games, these are the things that I live for as a gamer. Uh, you know, just sitting around, you know, sitting around the the proverbial fire, telling tales of of what our various characters have done. It was it was excellent. I was very 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 happy. Um, also, one of the cool things that we had happen uh, at. Uh, at GaryCon that we orchestrated specifically was a Surviving Strange Hollow little drinks get together. Uh, the lounge at GaryCon is very loud. Uh, it is it is not put together well for that many people. Um, so there's a lot of shouting over each other. Or if you're sitting at a particularly oblong table and chairs, you might not be able to hear what's happening at the other end. It's uh, it, it it's not ideal for for that kind of you know socialization, kind of an intimate socialization, but we still managed to have a great time. Uh, and, uh, you know, so of the Strange Hollow folk, uh, they're, you know, the Accidental Cyclops, Jason and Mikey, uh, they they brought us out, they, uh, uh, you know, kind of arranged for this table, opened up a nice tab for us, and, and just let us sort of just enjoy each other's company and, you know, maybe talk a little bit about work, talk about, you know, past projects, philosophize. It was it was excellent. Um, but of the actual, like, creative team that was there, uh, it was myself, Sean Merwin, uh, Elisa Teague, and Ed Greenwood. Um, so the four of us, we, we had some drinks, we had some laughs. It was a great time. I, I, you know, you all know, I absolutely adore Elisa. She is, uh, one of my favorite humans in the industry. And, uh, I, I was, it's always nice to get, to, to get to, uh, spend some time with her. Um, but I have a new appreciation on a conversational level with Sean, with Sean Merwin, um, you know, he and I started to, to talk a little bit more because of, you know, the projects, uh, but it's, it's just nice, it's nice to, to hear other industry folk talk about their, you know, their experiences and their, their leanings and what they're thinking about for this project and that project. And it's always, it's always nice to get that flavor. Um, but also, uh, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that, um, Becoming friends, like legitimate friends and uh, and coworkers with Ed Greenwood, uh, the creator of the Forgotten Realms, Elminster himself, uh, is not something that still occasionally blows me away. You know, at the end of the day, I am a gamer. 
I grew up on D&D. I grew up on Forgotten Realms. I grew up, uh, you know, uh, making dumb Morgan Hayden jokes. You know, like, this is, this is, uh, uh, you, you know, part of, of you know, my, my literal, my upbringing, what put me in the position that I am in. And now I am sitting around making inappropriate jokes with Elminster. Uh, and sharing a drink and working on the same project, helping shape the same world with him. Um, it's, it's intimidating. It's, uh, you know, yeah, I've been doing this forever and it, I still get starstruck knowing that I'm, I'm friends with this guy. Um, but he, you know, he was, he was, uh, in, uh, in, in rare form at the surviving strange hollow meeting and it was perfect and wonderful and everything, everything, that I needed in that moment. Um, so it was awesome. It was fantastic. Uh, then uh, my, uh, oh, uh, and then while I was at Gary Khan, obviously I ran into all kinds of other cool people, people that I know, new people, new friends. Um, I made friends with the uh, uh, Game Master Brian, uh, although he spells it wrong, uh, with the Game Master slash one of the producers uh, over at the encounter party D and D TV show. Um, and, uh, found out he lives only a couple hours away and, uh, he was super great, cool guy. Uh, we played, uh, one of the live action D and D, the, the Arpex, uh, we played Arpex with him. Um, and while we were waiting for our Arpex session to start, uh, Nathan, myself and, uh, and Brian, uh, beat one of the sequels to Golden Axe. Because they had the they had some stand up arcade machines and we we just sat there goof around and having a good time. Uh, Revenge of the Death Adder, I believe, is what it was called. Um, but it was it was just it was it was a great time. Uh, had a chance to have dinner with my boss over at Evil Genius. Had a chance to, to uh, have a dinner with Dave um, and his lovely girlfriend Ryan. Um, and that was that was nice. Just to you know, we talked some shop as you always do. Anytime, the, anytime that multiple industry, two or more industry people get together, uh, it will eventually turn to gamer stories and stories about work and whatnot. Um, but it was it was nice. You know, Ryan and Natalie they talked uh, service dogs and dogs dog breeds and stuff in general for most of the dinner. And Dave and I had a chance to uh, really kind of. You know, talk about some of the some of the stuff in the industry that uh, he might not be aware of, or I might not have had a chance to explain that I have been a part of this, or I have not been a part of this, or I don't want to be a part of this. You know, like it was just it was just really nice. It was a it was a it was a good dinner. It was a nice dinner, and then it, it probably could have gone on for another hour if it wasn't for the fact that Dave had to go run some events. Uh, so he was like, "All right, I gotta get going. I'll see you later." Push, you know, off he goes. Um, but it was, it, like, like I said, it was a, it was a good show. It was a good time to, to see everybody, uh, got a chance to see, you know, some of my, my, uh, elu more elusive industry fen friends that, uh, from time to time end up being behind closed doors at like VIP events and stuff. Uh, it was nice to, it was nice to see them, even if it was in passing for a, you know, a quick hug or maybe a how you do, um, but uh, I I firmly believe that a lot of those people, uh, especially the uh, the so-called like celebrity you know D and D folk, um, they just want to play games. They just want to be uh, treated like people. Um, I, someone asked me, uh, you know, hey, I didn't know you were friends with this guy. You, know, you should go get a selfie. And that's not me. You know, I will take selfies when people ask. Uh, if someone else is big into collecting photographic evidence of all the stuff that they've done, obviously I'm never going to be like, no, please don't take my picture. Um, but uh, I'm never, I, I'm terrible about being like, hey, let's grab a selfie. Uh, because especially if it's somebody who is a, a an in, like a, a, an industry professional or a Hollywood celebrity or, or something like that, because that's not how I want them to remember our interaction. I don't want them to be like, oh, there's that guy who works in the industry that, uh, you know, has to show his social media that, you know, he knows me. Uh, that's, I'm not, uh, what's the term that they use? Uh, I don't like to chase clout. Um, I would much rather that person 
see my name pop up on their Twitter or, or X or whatever, or you know, see a, a message that I put up on Facebook, and then they they actually want to comment on it. They want to be part of the conversation because they go, oh yeah, that's the guy who treats me like a person and not a poster child. So it was it was it, it's it is one of those things where I. I see a lot of the, you know, selfies and stuff going off and there's a little voice in the back of my head that goes, you know what? It's nice to have photographic evidence, but I, for me personally, it is nicer to have a good interaction and memory of that interaction. Try and make things memorable. Uh, so yeah, Gary Gunn. I don't know how I just got, I, I just kind of spun off on a weird celebrity tangent. Um, then my Gary Con came to a close that Friday night. Uh, we had dinner. Uh, I was gonna stick around for Stefan's, uh, you know, late night, uh, late night tomfoolery, but I got. I knew I had an early morning. I knew I had to get down to Schaumburg early, early, early to help with the Resnova booth, and so I packed up and got into bed early. Woke up early, got everything in the car, and bounced down to Schaumburg for Adepticon. And to say that Adepticon does not, uh, does it use, whereas Gary Con is amazing. I love it to death. Um, Adepticon hits it, it hits different. Uh, maybe, maybe, honestly, maybe because, um, I've only ever gone to Gary Con after I started in the industry professionally. So it's always been about trying to run events, trying to, you know, have meetings and, you know, maybe it's been that kind of thing. But Adepticon started out way back when with me playing games in, in tournaments. It just started out as this is a show that I go to, to to roll some dice and move some minis around. And the camaraderie that comes out of that show, the number of people that came up to the booth specifically, hey, Brian, I saw your Facebook post. You're here. How are you doing? You know, like, give me a hug. You know, like, the, it's, it is, Gary Khan's filled with wonderful humans and, and people that I, uh, I love to see them and squeeze them and be like, you know, we haven't seen you for, for so many shows or whatever. Um, but Adepticon, th there's a feel like, Specifically, there are friends at Adepticon, friends and colleagues and people there that went out of their way to come find me when they found out I was there to give me a hug or say hi or try to make plans or it was it's it's a different it's a different animal. It's a different a different level of I don't say level of respect. That's not right. Everybody at GaryCon is busy and you happen to be a friend moment that happens in the middle of it. Adepticon, everybody is busy, but part of the reason why they're busy is because they're making time to come have friend moments. I don't know if that makes any sense. I might be rambling. Um, but yeah, so we I get to Adepticon and uh, it meet almost immediately. It's time to go down to the booth and get things started. And that Saturday was. Amazing, just demo after demo after. You know, so we're at the Resnova booth, and there's not, we don't have merch yet. You know, we haven't delivered our to our Kickstarters yet. We have nothing to sell, except for how to play the game. Basically, come play a demo with us. We'll talk shop. I'll show you how to play, and hopefully, you'll be interested and you'll grab the QR code and and do the pre ordering. And it was. It was, so, it, it honestly, it felt like the old days at Privateer again. Laughter, having a good time, uh, you know, enjoying ourselves, but also watching gamers get it. Like, like, like playing these demos and seeing things come together and then bam, suddenly they get it. They know how the game works and they are ready to, ready to play as soon as things are, are available. Um, so it's a, it was a very positive, very, affer you know, affirming show for what we were doing, what we are doing as, uh, uh, as creatives to re to bring back Warzone in our version. Uh, so it's, it really, it did go over very, very well. We got to show off the, the new sculpt, 
uh, of the Immaculate Fury. I mentioned that earlier. When I get my, one of mine painted, I will show you guys. Um, yeah, no, it was just it was just a really it was a great day. Um, I didn't get a chance to get out of the booth. We, we were so busy. I didn't get a chance to get out of the booth apart just to grab lunch. Uh, so I didn't do any shopping. I didn't do any looking around or when someone was like, hey, have you checked out this game? Nope, I have not because I was only at that show for a day and a half and I had to make the most of it at the booth. And uh, I, I feel that we did. Uh, we got some good media exposure from some people that uh, that did some walkbys or came to specifically in the case of Angry Joe, he came and uh, specifically looked sought us out to do a quick little demo of the of the a very very fast rough demo of the system, um, and to talk about you know what we're what we're planning and what we're putting together. So that was really neat, uh, but yeah no it was, it was just Saturday was just a really good day, uh, and then when Saturday the end of the show or the end of the the hall being cl or the hall closes and we you know had announced that we were doing kind of this uh special announce we had a previously announced that we were doing a special announcement up in the lounge uh that night and so uh i we got everybody together uh we we topped out i think at like 14 people um which i know that doesn't sound like much uh altogether but in a in it for for a relatively impromptu event that has no prizes it's not actually gameplay it's just an announcement um getting that many people together it, it is a nice sign that our community as war our wars war zone uh, let's try that again our war zone eternal community um it shows that uh they're willing to be part of what we're building as much as I'm only in it for the prize. So I was very, very excited. And speaking of prizes, so we, we announced two, we had two big announcements. Uh, the first and foremost, the one that, uh, that, that I was more excited to, uh, uh, to give was, uh, I wanted to let everybody know that from here on out for the foreseeable future, unless something gets, in the way, Adepticon will be our big show. Will be the Warzone Eternal. Like this is where we have our big stuff, including the every Saturday, every Saturday night, every Saturday Adepticon evening. We want to start running starting next year. Uh, we want to start running the Warzone Eternal annuals. Basically, a uh, a super cool tournament that the uh obviously there will be some prize support but the actual winner the winner of that tournament um gets to uh kind of par partially emulate one of the higher backer levels that we did in the kickstarter uh meaning that you get to sit down and have a, have a little sit down dinner with alex and i and any of the other resnover affiliates that uh that alex wants to bring along uh, just kind of talk about the game, talk about you know our opinions, our design philosophies. Just generally hang out with us, but at the same time, you get to work with us to uh, design the or choose choose something from the Mutant Chronicles past uh, or something from the Mutant Chronicles collectively to sort of jump the line in the queue to become part of the game. Uh, we did this with the Kickstarter. Uh, there was there was a backer that uh, that basically there was a unit that never ever ever got a miniature, and uh, he desperately wanted to see that in the game. So that was his choice as the kick, as the Kickstarter backer uh, to make sure that that becomes part of the thing, and that's actually going to be in Wave Two. Um, so our concept here is the winner of the tournament kind of gets to do the same thing. Sit down with us, talk with us, figure out a unit that they really, really want to see either the Warzone Eternal version of or maybe for the first time ever in Warzone. Um, and that we will uh, we'll work with them to make sure that it kind of uh, it fills a nice niche in the faction that, that, it, that it belongs in, that the player, the winner of that, the, the annual player gets a, gets a cool thing. Um, just a, a generally, a generally cool idea, uh, that they will work with us to create as in, in miniature form, but still 
checking one of those past boxes off of off of uh, from previous versions of Warzone. Um, so the, so that obviously that went over really well. So people were already starting to talk on the Discord uh, as to what. You know, if you win, what are you going to get? If you win, what are you going to get? Uh, so yeah, it's 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 doing what I what I figured it would do. It get people really thinking about the future of the game, becoming dedicated to the concept of meeting at Adepticon and trying out for this cool stuff, and just building a good community. That's that's what that's what the the evening was about was to to try and kind of plant the seeds for what I want to be as a friendly, fun, tight knit player base. Speaking of which, the other major announcement uh, that I made is that uh, by the end of the year, I'm hoping sooner than that, but by the end of the year, we will have official Warzone Eternal tournament kits that you will be able to uh, uh, acquire from myself. Uh, this will include basically uh, the the how to run a, an official Warzone Eternal tournament. Um, the, the scenarios involved, at least in that particular, that season of, of Warzone Eternal. Um, and I, that I am working with Norse Foundry uh, to make some very, very cool uh, alternate objective markers, 40 millimeter metal coins uh, that are gonna be basically Luna, Luna City silver dollars. Luna, Luna City uh, credits uh, is, is what, we're, what we're calling them. It's a one credit coin. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, the the tournament pack, you will basically just pay shipping and handling, uh, and I will send this tournament pack to anywhere in the world. Um, we're not looking to actually make any money off of these. Uh, it's it is mostly just so the player base has something cool, the tournament organizers have something cool to give out as prizes. Um, and a reason why people will want to put together events. Uh, that's, that's the, that's the idea. Um, I am, uh, uh, more than a little excited to see when they, I was hoping to have a graphic to show everybody, uh, but the artist over at Norse Foundry is still working up the coin, so I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to try and rush something. I want this to be as cool as it, as it possibly can be. Uh, and yeah, so then we, we hung around, we talked, we sold stories, we, we discussed some of the ins and outs of, of some of the rules. Uh, and then at some point, um, two of our, uh, our, our most avid fans were like, Hey, we're heading back to our hotel. It's just up the road. They've got a, a cool game room that they said that we could use. We should go play some games, and that's exactly what we did. We kind of uprooted the 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 community night from the Adepticon Lounge, which had started to get very very loud with some of the events, and we scooted off uh, off site for a few hours and played some games and just enjoyed ourselves. Uh, it, it felt like the Adepticon of old. It was uh, it was awesome. It was a great great time. Uh, and then we came back. Alex and I talked about how things went. We crashed, and then on uh, on Sunday we got up and did the booth again, did, did some more demos, got a couple more pre-orders and, uh, then closed down the show and I came home. Uh, it was, it was a whirlwind of awesome. Uh, and I, 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 I totally wanted to show you guys some stuff. We got off to the side here. So, uh, our friends over at, uh, was it Thunderforge? Um, they brought an Adepticon only figure, uh, a special figure. And they gave us one, or gave me one, uh, because, A, it's cool, but also, I wanted to show, this is, so this, this, this model, if you want to see if I can get it nice and zoomed in, or you can get the, the detail on it. Can you get the detail? Oh, man, my camera, oh, there we go. So, it's... I mean, it's 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 just as detailed as, as like any of the any of the GW plastics, um, and uh, it is uh, the reason why this is important is because this is not resin. This is the same kind of hard cyocast that we're going to be making the Wars and Eternal models out of, and it's. I mean, it is solid. Here, I mean, I'm I'm beating the snot out of it, but more importantly. It's not brittle. 
like it's got just enough just enough bend to it that it's not breaking it's not cracking and it's got but it's not it's stiff enough that it's not uh, uh it's it's not going to bend in the in the blister packs or if you like you know when we package it if you know it's not going to make crimp swords and stuff this is a unbelievable material and i'm super glad that they that they were using that hard sia cast in their adepticon figure because uh it gives me the opportunity to show you guys this i mean like it's it, this is excellent it is so cool um and i am looking so in here I'll, I'll do the so this is about as much bend as you get out of it but i mean that's that's more that's more than most resins can give, and it's enough that it's not going to. If I if I drop it or if it gets uh, you know a die comes crashing into it, it's not going to shatter like some of the resins. It's amazing stuff, and I am super super glad that I've got this to help to to help me personally feel like we made the right call by going with that material. Um. Also, I got a couple other gifties uh, while I was at the show. Um, a couple of them. So, so there were some that I got from Gary Khan. Uh, so a couple years ago, I actually remember last year, last year or the year before, uh, I think it was last year, uh, John Popson created a special Gary Khan ring, uh, a, a Gary Khan, uh, a Gary Khan ring that is if you look at it dead on it is a an elithid uh that he he gives to uh gives to a a handful of us industry folk um that were there and then this year he did it again except this year he did it is a beholder and i still got the you know gary con 16 normal numerals and then it's got this cool kind of toothed mouth beholder with a bunch of eyes he does such a great job anyway uh but it it is it is nice to it's nice to start start having the collection of you know these are these are cool collective cool uh collectibles that yes i can wear them when i'm dming and things but it's also just a, a neat thing to have from knowing that I'm part of that growth of Gary Khan that I've done the that, that I've I've been part of part of that community uh, also while I was at Gary Khan I ran into uh, the wonderful Latia uh, and she gave me this cool d20 cool sparkly d20 with a D&D &D thing on the 20 it's awesome uh, and it's going to become one of my new favorite dice and then, while speaking of dice, so I ran into the the, the uh, fabulous folks at Smuggler's Coffee. They were there. Uh, they had some cool stuff. They had a hot sauce uh, that I bought, and I've already used on some. Uh, actually, I used it this morning on one of my egg burritos. Um, it's a. It actually uses one of their dark roasts as a uh, as a baseline. It's a it's a really good hot sauce. Um, but they also have these fancy Smuggler's Coffee. Oh, it's not going to, you're not going to be able to see that, but that's the Smuggler's Coffee logo. It's a big, heavy metal D20 um, with very sharp corners and kind of cool runic uh, runic lettering. I loved it. So uh, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get the hot sauce. I'm going to get one of these. And so now I also have one of these rad D20s uh, in my collection. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was, it was great. I love, I, again, I, I love this stuff. But I will, I'm going to take a moment and wh especially while we were talking about the, as we come to a close here, uh, while we were talking about the coins in the, uh, in the tournament kit for Warzone Eternal, uh, someone had brought up something else that I had done, uh, years ago when I was running Dark Age for Cool Money or Not, is our tournament kits over there, our special tournament packs, they had a pack full of stuff, we actually had to buy those, um, one of the things that they had were these metal coins, uh, from the universe called Blood Gelt. And the uh, the metal coins were used then to 
uh, not only for bragging rights, but also for kind of like challenge coin purposes. You know, I'm going to try and challenge you for a blood guild because that 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 one was you had to have blood guild to get into the Immortals tournament to try and win the big prize. We're not going to do that with the annual, but um, it was still a very big. A very big deal uh, during Dark Age is to, it was to have Blood Guild and some people who had multiple, and it was it was very neat. I'm hoping that maybe the the Luna co Luna coins will uh, become something like that mentality. You know, the uh, competing to get this cool, you know, these bragging rights. But uh, toward the end of Dark Age's existence. Uh, I had started to run out of the metal coins, and obviously we didn't have the budget to, to make more. So I started pouring resin ones to serve as kind of special, unique blood guilt moments. While I was at Adepticon, uh, one of our one one of the uh, one of the Dark Age fans uh, and a friend now, uh, who I only know through Dark Age, uh, named Zach brought me one of the unique 2017 blood gelts made out of uh, poured resin. He brought this to me and gave it to me as a gift uh, as just kind of a, a nice reminder of what of what we were what we were capable of and what we were doing and uh, some people might not, might not necessarily think that this is as big of a deal to them, but this was an this was a really cool gesture, and I'm gonna keep this nearby. I'm gonna keep this next to my desk as a reminder of what I feel was the best wargaming community that I've ever been a part of, and as a uh, a visual. Uh, a, a, a visual propping up of why I do what I do. So thank you, Zach, for bringing me this, you know, little, little, little uh, piece of my past and helping me, helping me remind myself why, why we do what we do and the future that I want to build. So, super cool there. Thank you, thank you. Um, I th yeah, I guess with that, uh, that's that was my double convention uh, weekend in a nutshell. Uh, had a ton of fun, did a bunch of cool things, uh, showed off some stuff. Uh, very much looking forward to Origins here in a few months. Uh, that is my next show, honestly. Uh, I th I was thinking about doing ACD, but it's just not it's just not going to be a thing. Um, so uh, Origins is my next my next gig, and until then, it's going to be a lot of making stuff and making videos and playing on streams and, and all that sort of. But I'll keep you in the loop, obviously. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess just uh, you know, try and be safe and uh, you know, wash your hands, get your shots, wear a mask, stay warm, take your vitamins. I don't know. Uh, just try and leave every room a little happier than when you got there. And, uh, you know, have a good time. And until next time, play some games. <laughs>